Okay, so there's a mouse, and the mouse is looking out of the hole, and halfway across the floor, he sees this big lump of cheese, and he says, that's my lump of cheese, I'm going to go and get that. So he gets out, and he gets halfway to the lump of cheese, and he hears, meow. And he turns down, he heads back to the hole, and just as he gets into the hole, the cat slams against the wall, and the mouse thinks, oh, goodness, this is not going to be quite as easy as I thought. So he leaves it five or six hours, everything goes quiet, he creeps out across the floor, he almost touches the cheese, he hears meow. The mouse, sorry, the mouse turns, heads back for the hole, disappears in the hole just as the cat slams against the wall. And he thinks, oh goodness, this is not going to be as easy as I thought. So this time he leaves it five or six hours and then he hears woof, 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 woof. So he thinks, great, now's my chance. So he heads across the floor, he gets his hands on the cheese, he's halfway back to his hole and the cat pounces on him. And the cat's just about to eat the mouse. And the mouse says, hold on, hold on, before you eat me, what happened to that dog? And the mouse says to him, in today's global economy, if you can't speak two languages, you're screwed. <laughs> so welcome, everybody. Welcome to your Better Results Faster workshop. And I hope at the end of this workshop to actually teach you two languages of health, okay? You already speak one, and you probably don't realize it, but I'm going to show you that one language and what it is. But I'm also going to teach you a second language which you can speak, and that will give you and your family more choices in the future, whether you're under chiropractic care or not. Uh, right, so we're going to dive straight in. Now, we're going to be about an hour. If I start running late, uh, I may be giving you more value. I'll try not to give you more value than an hour's worth of value, uh, because I don't want to spoil you. But... Um, I'm going to give you, like over the last 20 years, myself and Dr. Mario Claude have been to dozens of seminars, listened to probably hundreds of speakers now. So we've got loads of amazing principles we want to share with you, but we've only got an hour. So tonight I'm going to share with you the most important ones. It's the ones that I use, it's the ones that my family uses. So they're the most important ones to us, okay? Um, is that okay? Is that okay, guys? Beautiful, beautiful. Now, that what we've noticed over the last 20 years is the people that get the most from these seminars or these workshops, or they get the most from life, are the people that participate. So, for example, you've got two people, person A and person B, and person A talks about going to the gym, orders the stuff online and Amazon that they need to wear at the gym, and uh, they're waiting for the, the, the moons to to align so they're going to take their membership out and you've got a person b that just gets whatever they've got out of their drawer starts exercising in the house until they can afford to go to the gym and when they go to the gym they just ask the trainers on the, the best things the best exercises they can do so who's going to get the best results a or b who thinks b yeah the person that's participating absolutely so this is the way that you guys can participate the most in this class okay now, I understand that you are sat in a room, probably on your own, maybe looking at your phone, maybe looking at a computer, but you're probably feeling kind of weird trying to do a seminar or a workshop on a computer. Um, but I'm the same. Although it looks pretty cool, I've got this beach here and this, this uh, young uh, person skipping down the beach. Here I am, and here I am on the beach. But uh, I'm actually just in my house. So the way that you can participate the most is give a beautiful two-handed wave. So give me a two-handed wave. Let's see it. Let's see it. Beautiful. Great. Now that is the most exciting thing for me. I know it sounds silly, but I'm sat in a room just like you. And when I see everyone waving, I'm like, oh, I'm getting excited. So it's going to be more fun for you and it's more fun for me. And we learn more. Okay, great. Uh, so that's participation. And yeah, and I'm just going to dive right in. Right, let's get a, there we go, boop. Okay, so our why, what's our why? Now, my why is basically to, you may have heard that my mission is to help you and your family do what you love for longer. It started with my family. As my kids at the top, they're now 18 and 16. Um, they never had any medication in their entire life until this uh, health scare recently. They never had anything. Uh, one of them is being selected, has been asked to go and play uh, soccer at a national level for, for, for Team Canada. And the other one, I uh, love it a bit, she's crazy uh, academic and she's down at uh, King's, she's down at King's now. 
So, uh, so you know, when, when my kids were, were, were hurt or injured, we got them adjusted. And if we couldn't adjust them, someone else would adjust them. And we uh, gave them a bit of ice and stuff. And that was about it. I used a bit of ice to distract them. And, uh, and I'm just pleased to say we've got super healthy kids. And that's what I want for all families, you know, all families that come to see us. Um, now, we do have a bit of a quiz. Hey, Caesar. Welcome, welcome. Hey, Caesar. Nice to see you, man. You can leave, uh, if it's not too noisy, you can leave, uh, un leave yourself unmuted. We're having a bit of a quiz. And what we can, and this is what you can win, guys. This chiropractor uh, condoned chocolate. So we've got some chiropractor <laughs> condoned chocolate here, okay? Doesn't mean to say it's healthy, but I condone it for the quiz. Okay, so we're going to have the first quiz question. First quiz question is how early, how young do you think that we've adjusted children here in this office? Just shout out. In vitro. Sorry? <laughs> in vitro. The mother is pregnant well, with the child. We actually have, yes. God, you're so, so clever, Christy. <laughs> All right. In vitro. No. You can, you can affect them in vitro. It's true. Um, but after vitro. When, when did we first just our first baby? Perhaps once they start walking. Sorry, a week, yeah, a week. What'd you say, Vit Vitaly? Once they start walking. You want to start walking? Could be, so that's about uh, 18 months. What'd you say, Caesar? I said three minutes. Three minutes? <laughs> that's a good, good, yeah, I, I would I'd love to be there. We're not quite there yet. Do you want to have a guess, Monica? Oh, this is the rules. You get one for guessing, you get three for getting it right. I'd say a week. Yeah, good guess. The our children were adjusted three days old, three days old, and that's because I wasn't a chiropractor, and my wife had just given birth, so she wasn't feeling up for adjustment, and she wanted to adjust them first. Uh, so they were adjusted three days old, but the youngest we've adjusted is just four hours old. Oh my god! Yeah. So one of our patients, she'd been under care for a while. I think she'd had a couple of children under care. She went for a third. It was. And she had it in the car park outside the maternity ward. Oh. And she got into the maternity ward and she said, give me the phone. I'm going to call my chiropractor. So she called Dr. Marie Claude. Dr. Marie Claude went up and adjusted her just uh, four hours old. Yeah. So I asked her about that when you see her again, Monica. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, and it wasn't because she had a problem. Yeah. It was because the mom understood that it had done so much for her and her other children that she wanted to make sure her baby started off as balanced as possible. And that's what we do now for anyone under care with us. Excuse me. <coughs> for anyone under care with us, we do a welcome to the world uh, visit where we adjust mom and we adjust baby uh, at our expense uh, as soon as they're born. And we'll even go to the hospital. And I'll actually do that with you guys. If you end up in a hospital, I'll come up at my expense and I'll adjust you as soon as you want me there. Okay, because it's so important. People don't realize what a game changer it is. Um, yeah, so that was that. Now this little boy over my shoulder, let's see if I get this right, no wrong way. This little boy here, his name is Reese when he came to see us. And he was four years old and he came to see us with the same problem that the very first chiropractic patient ever was suffering with. Now, if you guys have been in our reception area, every time you sit down, there's a poster right behind you that tells you the story of the first chiropractic patient. So any idea what the first chiropractic patient was suffering with? This was in 1895, not our first chiropractic, the first one ever. Lower back pain. That's a good guess. I love that, Monica. Yeah, it, it's not quite right. But... Headaches. Headaches. Closer. Yeah, definitely closer. What do you think, guys? Vision. Sorry, Caesar? His vision. Bad vision. That's close. That's really close. I'm going to give you two for that. <laughs> You're gonna guess, Vitaly? I'm thinking. I don't. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Maybe um, 
I don't know, impaired mobility in some way? Yeah, was there... it wasn't. He was actually deaf. The first chiropractic patient ever was deaf. And this young man, when he came to us, he, he'd been deaf since he was born. He was uh, partially deaf. He couldn't hear, uh, so he was losing his speech. So he was about to go to a special school because he couldn't speak properly. And his grandfather was in the audience when I did this uh, workshop. But in the workshop, I talked about the first chiropractic patient who was a janitor and he was 17 years previously. He was working under a, a sink. Something went in the back of his neck. He had a buzzing in his ears and he couldn't hear properly. So fast forward 17 years and D.D. Palmer, David Daniel Palmer, the first chiropractor, he wasn't a chiropractor at the time. He was a healer. But he, he said to him, let me check you out. Let's see what's going on. He says, these vertebrae don't seem quite right. And he rationed out that if something went in his neck and caused the buzzing and the deafness, then maybe if he could correct it, maybe the hearing would come back. And he managed to convince him to let him adjust him on three different occasions. And on the third occasion, his hearing came back. So Palmer said, I found a cure for deafness. He invited a lot of other deaf people in and he adjusted them, but their hearing didn't come back. But what did happen, some of us that came in that had serious heart problems, less and less and less. Someone that came in that had serious indigestion problems, it got less and less and less. And he said, well, I haven't found the cure for deafness, but I've definitely discovered something. And that's how he uh, started the practice of chiropractic. Okay, so who's kind of like, wow, that's, that's pretty crazy. Who finds that pretty crazy? Oh, this is the big thing, Caesar. You've got to do a two-handed wave. This is like my most favorite thing ever. Yeah, man. Thank you. Bless you, because you're in a car. I'm in a room, but you're in a car, so thank you. <coughs> now, here's the next question. This is the bonus question. What country do you think D.D. Palmer came from? I would give you an A, B, and C, but someone would win for sure. In fact, no. I'll give you an A, B, and C. You pick whichever one. So did he come from the U.K.? Did he come from the United States or did he come from Canada? Who thinks UK? Who thinks UK? UK. Yeah. Who thinks United States? Who thinks Canada? Christine! What about you, Caesar? What do you think? I think the UK. UK, okay. So Christine won. Can you guys believe that? He was in Canada. He's a Canadian. I'm Kathy. I'm not Christine. Sorry. It says Chris Nielsen on your thing. Kathy. Chris is my husband. Oh, okay. Sorry. Oh, it's because, oh, because I'm using his laptop. Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry. Sorry, Kathy. Sorry. That. I won. I was, I was getting uh... <laughs> Yeah. Sorry about that. That's terrible. That's okay. Oh. It was like... Okay, so yes, Dee Dee Palmer was actually born in Ontario in Canada. He was born in Port Perry, Ontario. So there's no Canadians know that. And I'm like, yeah. it's the second biggest health profession in the world. The Greeks invented medicine. The Canadians discovered chiropractic. Or the Greeks discovered medicine. The Canadians discovered chiropractic. But on Canada Day, no one even mentions it. I'm like, are you kidding me? Anyway. So there you go. You guys all know probably 10 times more than your medical doctor knows about chiropractic now. Okay, guys. So I'll just forge on. And that's all why right, to help you and your family do what you love for longer. So how do you think, just a gut feeling, as a nation, how are we doing as far as long-term health goes? Things like asthma, allergies, diabetes. How do you think? We're getting worse. Yeah. Everyone else uh, get, get that feeling? I do hundreds of these seminars, uh, or the hundreds of these workshops, and everyone always says, yeah, we're getting worse. And the statistics actually show that you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And this is the one that breaks my heart. So this is that people have never been sicker. And this is from the Center of Disease Control. This was back in 2009. So this is almost 15 years ago. This was before this latest health scare, okay? Children born for the first time after the year 2000, not expected to live as long as their parents. So who is not happy with that? Come on, who's not happy with that? Let's get them going. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not happy with it either. Well, Vital, you can't tell me you're happy with that. <laughs> it, it depends how, how long you want to live, like... I feel like 80 is a good age. Children, you tell you me know? children are 
to live as long as you. <laughs> so, man, I've got two kids, and believe me, if you think they're not going to live as long as you, then that's there's something wrong there. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I want to. Uh, yeah. So this the Center of Disease Control. That's two thousand and nine, uh, and and I can tell you now, without a question of a doubt, with all the sitting down that they've been doing for the last two years, and more importantly, the the uh, culture that that's caused and will cause, and the culture of work that's been kind of decimated at the moment. In 20 years' time, they're going to have a lot bigger problems than this, for sure. But anyway, the good news is it does not have to be that way. And I'm going to explain why in a second. So mm -hmm. I'm going to talk, have a little bit about your doctors, two different languages of health, the three stages of the loving life pyramid. This is how we help people here uh, achieve, uh, you know, natural function, natural health. Spinal hygiene stretches. So that's some things that you're going to have to take away that you're going to be able to do. Uh, the four pillars of health. This is the advanced workshops, okay? These are help you. These help to help you generate uh, nurturing habits. We'll get to the end of a little bit of a quiz, and I'm going to give you some resources. Because that was the other thing. What myself and Dr. Marie Claude have noticed over the years, we often go to these seminars, or we see this information, uh, or this program. We get really excited, and we want to. We decide we're going to change everything, but then two weeks later, nothing's changed. Has anyone anyone ever experienced that before? I see uh, Vitaly is uh, smiling. So, so yeah, cool, cool. So, uh, so I want to give you some resources at the end of this, so you don't do that. Would that be okay? Would that be okay, guys? Come on, would that be okay? Yeah, beautiful. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Okay. So at the end, I'm going to give you some resources. So your doctors, uh, a lot of you may have. Um, Sorry, right, I'm just going to disappear for a second. Okay, there it is. Which of you guys have seen this little book? You guys seen it? Yeah? Yeah, you got it? Monica, no? Vitaly, no? Kathy? Yes. Yeah, you got it? Cool. Okay, this is a, yeah. So, um, I, I met Dr. Marie Claude uh, in 2021 when I was in the military. Okay, so I was a military engineer and I uh, got assigned to the Marine commandos and was initially sent to Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, but I met Dr. Marie Claude in Plymouth and she said to me, I'm a chiropractor. And I said, oh, yes, bad backs, bad necks, they're a waste of time. And she said, no, no, you don't understand. I work with babies born addicted to drugs. I work with uh, children on asthma inhalers. I help adults with learning difficulties. And indeed she did. She had a foster mom that would bring her foster children that initially were so wired because they'd been born addicted to alcohol or drugs that they weren't eating and they weren't sleeping. And yet under care very quickly with Dr. Marie Claude doing some very light adjustments the babies would fall asleep uh, and they would start thriving. They start eating. And uh, the same foster mom repeatedly brought her children to, to marry Claude. Well, at the time, I was a kind of arrogant and ignorant engineer. And things for me were a military engineer. Things were very black and very white. So um, I said, that sounds a bit weird to me. It sounds a bit left field. She said, look, if you want to go out with me, you've got to go to this workshop. So I was in a <laughs> workshop exactly the same as you guys, all right? Although it was in person at the time. Okay, okay, I admit I had an ulterior motive. But at the end of that workshop, I was like, this stuff is awesome, sign me up. I'm leaving the military, I'm gonna become a chiropractor. So it took me a while, but I did eventually leave the military. Um, I became a chiropractor. But when I was in the military after meeting her, I ended up going to Iraq, Afghanistan, came back and I lost my health quite, uh, quite dramatically and surprised. I was very, very surprised. Um, and in my recovery, I tried the medical route, but things actually got, for me, got worse at that stage. Uh, and don't get me wrong, there's a time and a place for everything. But for me at that time, it was not the, what was happening wasn't the right thing. And I actually ended up meeting an 80 year old chiropractor who basically taught me or retaught me these principles that I'm going to share with you tonight. 
and they gave me the 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 tools to turn things around uh and i started to have a natural recovery i started running a lot uh, and, and, and i did a lot of stuff which i'm going to talk about in a bit and one of the things i did was i wrote this book it's called 12 steps back from the abyss a war veterans journey from depression to joy so two of you guys have got it i'll make sure you other guys get it <coughs> excuse me um Usually these books sell uh, for five bucks a piece. They were, I sold 2,000 of them in the first three months. So I sold them. I don't give them away. But uh, I make sure everyone in our practice has one. The reason being is in my research, it turns out that one in seven people in the UK and in Canada, it's one in five. And it's probably worse now. But one in five people have serious neurological issues. So things like anxiety, bipolar disorder, Tourette's, uh, depression. I mean, the list goes on, mania, those sorts of stuff. Um, so that means we all know on average between 35 and 50 people that have those sorts of issues, might be work colleagues, might be friends, might be relatives, whatever. So I give you a copy because it's a good reference. It just talks about 12 simple things you can do. It could be an opener to get them into the chiropractic office if, if you choose to, because chiropractic helps with a lot of neurological things as well. And uh, and it's because I need the, sorry, people need the information more than I need the money. Now, if you want to buy them, I sell 10 for 20 bucks. So basically it's that cost, but you can give them out to friends and family. Um, <laughs> yeah, just as a useful reference. Okay, guys, I'm just going to grab a glass of water. So I'll stop coughing on you guys because I know it's disgusting. <laughs> I'll be back in a second. Okay, right, so that's 12 steps back. So is that pretty good? Everyone got that? Yeah, okay, beautiful. Thanks, Isa, thanks, uh, Kathy. Right, okay. Now, Dr. Marie Claude, so I, I talked a little bit about myself. Now, Dr. Marie Claude, she was a third damn black belt in Taekwondo. At the age of 70, she'd fought internationally in the US and Russia. At the age of 17, she went to see a chiropractor because she had pain in her hips. But after being under care for a year, she turned around to the chiropractor and said, I'm kicking the same, I'm competing the same, I'm eating the same, everything's the same. The only thing that's different is the chiropractic care. But I haven't had acid reflux and vomiting for months. And I've had that since I was two years old. Right, so she uh, found that under chiropractic care, a lot of issues she'd had for years and years and years got less and less and less, including thyroid problems. She was told by a, a doctor at the age of 16 that she had thyroid issues and would need to be on medication for the rest of her life. And she said, no, no, I don't fancy the idea of that. And after being under chiropractic care for a year, those issues are completely gone. So that's why I'm always very frustrated when I do my little checks when I'm at the different uh, uh, venues where I do little checks for people and show them what's going on. A lot of time I see ladies and, and mostly it is ladies that they're, they're stupid forward and they've got this little uh, kind of like a little uh, like a hump or a little muscle development on the back of their neck. And they're telling me they're getting tingling in their arms. They're getting uh, headaches and also they're getting thyroid issues. Because often they've been on medication for a long time. And once you start the medication, you've got to stay on it. Does anyone know why? You have to stay, why you have to stay on your thyroid medication? Yeah. Well, because your levels, your thyroid levels drop. And depending on what level you're at, you're either a hypothyroid or hyperthyroid. So it affects your, your level of, your level of um, yeah. behavior, like how you... The amount does, but what happens is you start taking the thyroid medication, it actually starts to downregulate the thyroid. So in other words, the thyroid stops working the more medication you take. So it actually starts to destroy the thyroid. That's why you have to take it forever. You don't just take it for a little while and then come off and everything. What you just said was all me. I've had a thyroid condition for my whole life. Right. Well, there you go. It's something we want to monitor, Monica. And what we do with you, now I was told, and I hope that it isn't correct, 
that the thyroid medication destroys the thyroid. To me, it makes more sense that it downregulates it. In other words, you're putting chemicals in so the thyroid downregulates, but it could damage it as well. But I'm hoping that as people, if the if it is a nerve system problem, and it and I don't know, and I don't even know the research. I just know that we do have a lot of people come in with thyroid issues and they find that they can actually reduce the amount of thyroid medication they're on. And then hopefully if their thyroid is, is, is still healthy and working and kicks back in, you can reduce that. But that isn't a call for us, you see. We don't put you on the medication. No. We can't take you off it. But you can. So as you watch and see how your thyroid is going, the next time you get your 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 levels measured, if they say, oh, it looks like you're on too much medication, that to me would be an indication that function is returning to your thyroid. Right. I'll keep sense? an eye on that. Sorry? I said, I'll keep an eye on that. Yeah. Yeah. That would uh, be a good thing to do, especially if you know the levels already, if you have them recorded yeah. or ask next time you're there. Okay, cool. So that's what happened to her as well. Uh, but she was, she was, that was at the age of 16. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, I've gone and blown it. Three biggest killers in Canada. Any idea what they might be? Diabetes. Cancer. Good guess, diabetes. That's actually number four. Cancer? Yeah, that's number car, one. Car accidents. <laughs> no, no. Obesity. Obesity. Yeah. Uh, surprisingly, no. Probably not in Canada. Probably in the US. Mm. It's definitely getting higher. Inactivity? Um, that is probably, yeah. <clears throat> that is probably Heart the root of all of it, but... Uh, Sorry, not all of it, not all of it. That's not true. The root of most uh, lifestyle diseases, because all of these are lifestyle, not all of them, but a lot of the elements of these are lifestyle diseases. So it's cancer, heart disease, and stroke. Now, this is a really important point. In the cases of heart disease, 80% of cases of heart disease, any idea what the first symptom is? Chest pain. Good answer, Monica. It's actually much worse than that. What else do you think? What's worse than chest pain? Ask the question again. In 80% of cases of heart disease, what's the first symptom? And it's much worse than uh, chest pain. A lot of breathing. Much worse than that as well, Kathy. Mm. What's the worst thing that could happen to you if you had heart disease? You'd die. <laughs> exactly. So Monica and 30 and everyone in 30% in 80% of cases, the first sign that you have a problem with heart disease is you're dead. Now show of hands. How many people know someone or have heard of someone that was fit as fiddle, right as rain, never had a day off work in their life, so-called, but yet dropped down dead or found out that they had cancer, heart disease or stroke. Yeah. 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 Me too. My uh, stepdad just upstairs two years ago, Completely had a stroke in a chair. Completely out of the blue. <laughs> and he never had a day off work in his life. And uh, so the point is this. The number one, the number one health um, profession that we go to when we have health issues is based on the treatment of symptoms and disease. That's the practice of medicine. Okay. I'm not knocking it. There's a time and a place for everything. But it's the diagnosis and treatment of symptoms and disease is the practice of medicine. And yet the three biggest killers in Canada are often without any symptoms at all until it's too late. So, and these are all on the rise. Stroke, heart disease, and cancer, all of them are on the rise. Despite spending more money having more um, charity drives, you know, uh, it's, it's still increasing. But as I said to you earlier, it doesn't have to be that way, okay? Now, I put it to you that the number one, like I say, the practice of medicine really is, what, is a language that we all speak because we've had it drilled into us since we were young. So, <laughs> so if you have a trip or a fall, then you take a, uh, a painkiller to make the pain go away, okay? That's an outside-in approach. What do I mean by that? 
But there's two aspects to it. One is I'm actually physically doing something from the outside to try and bring health to the body. So I'm taking a medication or I'm having a surgery or I'm using my educated mind to come up with a solution to why my body isn't working. That's an outside in solution. Chiropractic was the first um, what health philosophy that I'm aware of. There may have been others in the past that deals with inside out. So in other words, you may remember when you, we came to us, when you came to us, we said to you, we're not going to try and make the pain go away. That's not our job. Our job is to bring balance inside, to bring balance to your nerve system and allow the body to heal from inside out. So there's, again, on the same two levels, when we're actually physically adjusting you, our aim is to bring balance to the spine, take pressure off the nerves, and that allows you to heal from within out. Because now instead of having, say, 80% of power flowing down a nerve, if we can correct the imbalance, you've now got 100% of power or 95%. So you're in better state to heal. Does that make sense, guys? I know this is a little bit in depth. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so that's one level of it. And the other level is it's not my educated mind that's trying to make your pain go away. It is the intelligence within your body. And we call it the innate intelligence. So it's the intelligence of your body. And let's just get this in perspective. 10 million cells die in your body every single second you have 10 million cells dying so that's skin cells that's internal organ cells that's you know the cells throughout are dying and you're excreting it in your breath when i'm coughing i'm blowing out a bunch of cells when i'm going to the bathroom i'm getting rid of a load of cells they're dying all the time you know you consist anyone idea how many how many trillions of cells do you consist of a human adult Roughly. What do you think? Probably a lot. Like probably a lot? Life. Come on, give me a number. <laughs> I'm trying to give you a point for probably a lot. <laughs> I don't know. 100 if, trillion. 100 trillion. Good guess, 100 Monica. Trillion. You're really, really spot on. I'm going to give you three for that. Yeah, I was going to say that too. Same thing. Uh, I'll give you three as well, Kathy. I'll give you. Sure. What do you think, Caesar? Me too. I was going to say that. Oh, you're going to say that. Cool. Uh, Vit Vitaly? Well, 100 it is. <laughs> 100 it is. It's, it's between 70 to 100 million. Yeah. So, so sorry, 70 to 100 trillion. And yes. 10 million cells die every single second. But it's okay. You don't need to go around with a dustpan and brush in a big bag and pick them up and carry them around with you because 10 million cells grow every single second. So from the food that you eat, you know, from the actions you take, the body takes that food, re, uh, sorry, takes the food, breaks it down and makes these new cells. Now, how many of you read a book that taught you how to create 10 million cells every second in your body? Has anyone ever read that book? No, that instruction book doesn't exist, but your body knows how to do it without you getting involved. OK, and it's only when there is interference that it doesn't do it to the best of its ability. So if you start feeding yourself with sand instead of good, nutritious food, then over a period of time, everything's going to break down quite quickly in that case. OK, so I'm just going to canter through this. There's a lot of them here, but it, basically I've just covered them all. So medical philosophy is outside in, chiropractic inside out. Medicine's actually got its own language and it really perplexes a lot of people. But when you understand it a little bit, it takes a lot of the fear out of it. So that's what upsets me. People come in here and they are terrorized that there's someone has told them they have arthritis. They say, Dr. Craig, I have got arthritis. And I'm like, do you know what that means? Arthritis, arth means joint, itis means inflammation. So what you're telling me is you have an inflamed joint. And what the medical doctor has told you is instead of saying, well, I don't really know what the problem is. I don't know what the solution is. They just say, well, you have arthritis. Um, and it's, it's like saying to a teenager, you have growing pains. It doesn't really solve anything. Now, hyper just means too much. Hypo with a zero means too little. 
You may have heard me talking about the spine in fancy terms. You've got something called the cervical spine, which means the neck. Cervical comes from the word cervix, which means neck. So cervical spine just means neck spine. Um, there's lots of other words that are used to actually scare people. And BJ Palmer, well, not to scare them, but to kind of make them think, wow, that's a little too complicated for me to deal with. But when you actually look at the breakdown of the word, it's actually uh, not simple, but it takes a lot of the fear out once you understand what these words actually mean. Um, BJ Palmer said that, medical, who was the, the, the son of the very first chiropractor, he said that the medical doctor gives the diagnosis in Latin, but he gives the bill in English. Because he wants you to understand the bill, but not the diagnosis. Does that make sense? Right. Okay. So, uh, so outside in is based on treating symptoms. When you come to me, I'm never trying to get rid of your symptoms. I'm always trying to bring balance to your body. Uh, educated thinking and name, we talked about that. And you'll remember this from when I first chatted to you. Feeling well is the out, is thought to be health in the outside in language. But we've already saw, we've already seen that the top three killers in Canada, you can be feeling perfectly well, but be very, very sick with cancer, with a, about to have a stroke or with heart disease. Whereas in chiropractic, we talk about functional well equal health. Everyone remember that? Okay, cool banana. So if I'm vomiting because I ate a meal that had food poison in it, is Dr. Craig sick or is he healthy? Healthy. That's an unusual answer. What does everyone else think? Sick. Yeah. What healthy. Think? Healthy. Okay, Vitaly? Healthy. Hey, Monica, I've actually, you know, these guys are with me. So, so because I'm getting the, the, the poison out of my body, is that, is that a healthy move? Yes. Yeah. So although in, in that, you're exactly right, because we live this outside in language where we believe that if you're feeling well, you're healthy. If I'm thrown up and feeling crappy, you think I'm, I'm sick. I'm not sick. I'm expressing health. If I keep that poison in my body, it'll go into my bloodstream and, and uh, probably kill me. But because my body is intelligent, it gets it out so that I can carry on functioning. Yeah. But these guys got a bit of a, bit of a advantage. I always give that example on the second visit, usually. <laughs> but yes, and there's lots of other examples. Fever. Fever is a healthy response. It's my body elevating the temperature so my body kills any uh, invasive organisms. If I take a paracetamol to reduce my temperature, it's actually allowing those invasive organisms to reproduce because they're not being destroyed by the elevated temperature. About 40 degrees C, bacteria and viruses, the proteins start to denature, which is why you know fever is not, in 99% of cases, is not a bad thing. Now, don't get me wrong. If you've got a child that's had a raging fever for four or five days, and you've been feeding it water and uh, keep the temperature down and it's not going away, then there's probably a problem there. But generally, in 99.9% .9 of cases, you let that run for a day or two, it will blow itself out. And studies actually show that children that are allowed to run a, a fever end up with higher IQ uh, tests uh, later on in life. Okay, you guys have all seen this. Uh, stress leads to nerve problems, leads to muscle imbalance, leads to stre structural asymmetry. A little bit of an addition. Where it says muscle system, you can actually replace that with organ system. Because the nerves, if they're out of balance, are also interfering with your organ system, okay? Which is uh, means that you've got some major uh, functional changes happening if, in certain cases with subluxations. Okay, we've seen this. Now, what we haven't, what I didn't talk about on this one is on the left, you have fight and flight, and on the right, you have rest and digest, okay? My aim in this office, when I adjust your neck or pelvis, is to activate the rest and digest system. And what happens is, uh, in fact, let me rewind slightly. The reason this is important is 
it's the way that the nerves respond. Actually, it's the same nerves, it's the same organs, but it's different chemicals. And it depends how your body physiologically needs to behave. So in other words, how physically it needs to behave. So fight and flight is if you have a bear in the room, okay? And the reason, the way I remember how the body responds is to remember what would your body do if it's super intelligent and there's a bear in the room. Well, to start with, um, would you would you be digesting food if there's a bear in the room? What do you think? Yes or no? Be digesting food if there's what? A bear in the room about to eat you. Would you oh. be digesting food? Probably. Would you feel a bit sick and maybe vomit it out. So the point yeah. is you don't need energy to digest food when there's a bear in the room. What do you think, Kathy? Oh, I'm, I'm basically not digesting food when there's a bear in the room. No, no. Because, and you know, people throw up when there's, when there's something bad going, it doesn't have to be bad, but there's some threatening situation, then you vomit the food out. Because the two things that are the most energy intensive are brain action and, and digesting food. So can you do mass problems if you're being chased by a bear, do you think? Would you be in the mood to do mass problems? No. no. Or have sex? No. So no. in other words, you're not thinking straight and you're not feeling fruity and you don't want to eat food. Now, over the last two years, have you noticed anyone that's been uh, making the, have you noticed people around you making unintelligent decisions? Has anyone noticed that in the last two Trump, years? no. No? Well, <laughs> I like not everybody. There's just loads of people. And I, God making really bizarre decisions okay and i don't just mean politicians i mean like people went on neighborhoods you know which which because they're in this state of fear so their brain isn't working as it's designed to do so if you've been chased by a bear then the, the energy goes to your legs your heart rate increases your lungs expand your eyes dilate so you can see what's going on okay that's what happens. You don't make intelligent decisions and all those other good things. But the other thing that doesn't happen is your body doesn't heal because there's no point healing if, you, uh, if you're about to be eaten by a bear. If you're going to be eaten by a bear in 30 seconds time, there's no point healing. Okay. Now, the trouble is in society, we live in this low state of fear constantly. So often people aren't healing as they should do just because emotionally they're in this state of fear which is why one cause of subluxation is emotional problems. It stops your body healing as it should do, okay? And the other reason we want everyone to have a nice environment when they come here, and you know, we got nice music and we try and keep it clean and we do like keep, keep people, you know, uh, civil, uh, is because we want you to be in this rest and digest situation when you get an adjusted, so that you go home and you're healing, okay? So that's all part of it. Okay, and then this is the love and life pyramid. Like I'm running, so so this is a strategy we use. The adjustments in rhythm. You guys have all been coming in and getting your adjustments in rhythm. The second layer, we're going to talk about the spinal hygiene exercise. I'm going to show you some today. I'm going to show you two today. There's one that I want you to start today if you're not already doing it and to carry on doing it for the rest of the month. And then the four pillars of health. These are the workshops that I do every two months do a workshop. It's usually on one pillar of health. The workshop we've got coming up will actually be a mixture of a few of the pillars. It's the new year, new you workshop. It's designed to give you more energy to uh, help get you feeling better and to help you lose between six and eight, so, so six and 18 pounds in 30 to 60 days, depending on how hard you guys want to hit it. Um, so that's going on on the 26th, but I will talk about that in a second. The adjustment process you guys know about. Oh, sorry. The point is, when we get this pyramid correct, we're going to have better response in the nerve system, which is going to help the muscles and the organs, and it's going to help the skeletal system. And then you've seen this path before. We started in intensive care now. That's where we are now. At the four month period, we're going to redo that. After the year, that's when myself and Dr. Marie Claude saw the biggest changes. Okay. That's when we look back and we saw the biggest changes. Now, you guys can do whatever you want. It's your lives 
but I would recommend giving it at least a year before you can judge chiropractic care, okay? Now, that said, if you want to pause care, just let us know. The reason for that is I'm going to, A, we're going to celebrate you got to where you want to get to, but also I'm going to give you some resources that help you hold the gains you made as long as possible. Because a little bit like weight trading, um, after a period, if you stop, that's fine. You can go back to sitting on the couch, but over a period of time, you're going to lose a lot of the gains. Or if you're eating good nutrition, it's the same thing with any natural kind of health process. Uh, so all we say is just let us know. We want you to know, uh, you know, you're part of our family. You always be my family. Uh, always be my chiropractic family. And we'll always be here to help you uh, as much as we can. Okay, spinal hygiene exercises. Okay, guys, for this one, all you need to be able to do is see me. If I can see you, it's a bonus. But you need to be able to see me. And I do need you to stand up. Obviously, not you. It looks like you're in the car. You're in the car, aren't you? Yeah? Okay. Yeah. So find a space there. So basically where you can swing a bit of a cat. So it's best if you stand it up. So stand up. Stand up, guys. And like I say, as long as you can see me, I don't need to be able to see you necessarily, although that is pretty handy. <clears throat> okay, this first one is called tummy time exercises. The reason it's called that is baby when they're on the tummy, they're looking up over their shoulder. And what that does is that develops the first neck in the spine. Excuse me, develops the second curve in the spine. This is the first curve that's developed in utero when baby's in mum's tummy. The second curve develops um, when baby's looking around, okay? And the reason this is so uh, important is it keeps the head over the shoulders and it acts like a big spring. And it, it does like, there's at least a dozen really cool things it does for the body when it's correct, okay? And you know yourself, when you see someone and they're walking down the road like that, do they look sick or do they look healthy? Yeah. Yeah, they look sick as opposed to someone that's kind of upright and, you know, in good, good shape there. So once we've been unlocking your spine with the adjustments, we then go to the spinal hygiene exercise. And this is the most important one. So we're bringing the arm in and we follow it, follow it, follow it. We track the thumb. We're going to hold it there for four, three, two, one. Okay. And then we change to the other side. As far as you can, track the thumb. Four, three, two two, one. And we're going to do that again. This is one set. So four reps is one set. And then on the other side. Okay, so that's one rep. Now throughout the day, you need to do 10 reps. You could do two reps at the same time. Perhaps as you're starting, don't do two reps at the same time just because it'll take a little while for your neck to get used to the motion or it can do, but you could do two reps at the same time. Okay. Now, obviously you can't always do this. Like if you're in work or in the car, so there's an adaptation to it and it's really easy. If you're just looking up over, yeah, that's that one. You watched my thing. <laughs> Kathy, Kathy's a bit of an expert. She's watched my YouTube videos. So I'm kind of humbled. I'm going to do, I'll do that at the end, Kathy. So this is, it. it's really simple. Looking up over your shoulder and hold it. Four, three, two, one. Now you're not rotating your shoulders. Okay, so the mistakes people make is they rotate their shoulders when they do the arm motion or where they, when they look over their shoulders. So don't do that, look it up. And then the second thing is they're just turning their head, they're not looking up. So when you turn, turn and look up. One, two, three, four, and then the other side. One, two, three, four. Okay, great, relax there. Now, one thing that Kathy showed, now you can actually do it, you can actually be on the floor and just look up over your shoulder. If you've got a yoga mat and you like doing that, you can do that, that's perfect. The other thing you can do that I found was kind of weird, when you put your hands out in front of you and close your eyes, pretend you're on the floor and you actually look over your shoulder, the movement is super smooth. It just kind of feels a lot more natural. You just imagine you're on your, your tummy. You don't have to do that, but that's just kind of a nice one. All right. Now, the places you can do it, because people say to me, well, I can't do that. You could do it, but you need to anchor it to something. So, for example, 
when you're brushing your teeth, you can anchor it to that. So you can either do it while you're brushing your teeth or just after you don't want to poke yourself in the nose with a, with a toothbrush. But also in the shower, in the bathroom, walking the dog, standing in any queue. So if you're in the, like the uh, Loblo, Loblo's queue, you can get it in. Okay, I've done it. I've actually got a video of me doing it in the uh, Food Basics. Um, bank queues, you know, you get the idea. You can do it anywhere. You can do it in the car at a red light, obviously not when you're driving, but when you stop at a red light, you got easily, it's only 16 seconds to do one rap, okay? So 10 a day, just to be done. Out. Yeah, Monica? How many reps need to be done? <laughs> Sorry, it's 10 reps a day. Excuse me, 10 sets, four reps. So it's just like one, two, three, four. That's one, one set. Yeah? So it's the, it's both sides twice. That's one uh, rep. I keep getting those words mixed up. And that's one set. That's one set. Sorry, I keep getting those words mixed up. So you do 10 sets a day. Yeah. Right, okay, guys. And then the second one I'm going to show you is for the shoulders. And it's to open up the shoulders and also it's to relax this muscle here. So that as it gets, what happens is as the, that muscle gets tight, it pulls the shoulder forward, it brings the head forward. It's called pec minor. So I'm going to show you back here. Actually, I should have done this to start with. I'm going to unshare. Oh my goodness. Oh, no. oh that's not the one. There it is. Sorry, I should have done this to start with if you guys are watching me. Yeah, but anyway. So you can do this in a doorway. I just choose to use this because I don't have a doorway in front of the camera. So I'm going to use this. Okay, so you lock your elbow in a doorway. I'm going to stretch this muscle. So if this is the door frame, I don't do it at 90 degrees, not at 90. It's got to be at 135. Okay, so the elbow goes in. Okay, and then the feet, if I turn my feet, that is 90 degrees. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but I'm going to go a little bit further. I'm at 135 degrees. So I can feel a stretch there. This is where I'm feeling the stretch. And then the last thing I do is the head. So the first thing is the elbow. The second thing is the feet. And then the last thing, the head. And then I hold that there for between 10 and 30 seconds because that's a nice stretch. I like that stretch there. Okay. Now, obviously, if you have shoulder problems, and then you do the other side. So you always do both sides. So I'll turn around and do the other side there. So if you guys got a door frame, just try that now. So we're going to lock the elbow in, 135, not there. It's going to be there, 135. So you need to have somewhere where you can lock it that Monica. So use your other arm and do it on the edge of that wall. Now on the edge of the wall, that's it. So I'm a bit higher, 135. And then you turn your feet. So right angle or parallel with the wall is going to be 90. So you need to go a little bit further to about 135. That's it. Your other arm, no, I'm, I'm putting my arm out for demonstration purposes. Yeah, you can leave yours there. Because where you're feeling the stretch is here. The, the, the mm -hmm. shoulder inside, the, like where the wall is. That's it. And then the third thing is you pull your head over. And then you kind of lean in. Great. Nice one. That looks good there, Kathy. I think that looks good, uh, Caesar. <laughs> um, Natalia, I can't see. All right, guys, great. Just relax that. Now, we're all going to go through that. It's also on my YouTube channels. I'm going to send you these videos. I know some of you have seen them, but I'm going to send you the videos after we finish this call so you'll be able to check them out. And also, we're going to check. We're going to check. So start doing the tummy time now. All right. Hey, Vitaly. Nice. Start doing the tummy time exercise. Uh, this one. Start doing it. Every day now, I'm going to send you a tracking sheet so you can track it. I'm going to send all this stuff tonight. It's all part of your resources, all right? So we got that going on, right? Okay, we're almost there, and I am going to wind up really quickly because I've rudely taken a lot of time. Right, I'm going to give you a quick review. There you go. And we're going to, right, okay. So your body is a temple. Now, this is the four pillars of health. It's loving nutrition, loving movement, loving rest, and loving thought. So I'm going to talk about very briefly about some things that we cover. This is normally a, a, a one-hour workshop on each subject or one and a half hour. But I'm going to talk about loving nutrition, which you guys are on fish oil at the moment, taking fish oil regularly. Now, oh, yeah, we've already had that conversation, haven't we, Kathy? Yeah, Kathy doesn't do fish oil. Oh, you guys are great. 
Vitaly? Vita Vita yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. Depends yeah. on how often it's I work a, You're out. a young guy. Yeah, but seriously, if you want to have things go well for you mentally, physically, then get some sort of omega-3, all right? It doesn't have to be fish oil, but fish oil, I notice, seems to have the, the highest concentration of the uh, active ingredients, the EPA and the DPA. Um, there are other alternatives. But anyway, the point is this. If you haven't got fish oil, get some. I don't care where you get it from. I do sell it. You don't have to buy it from me. The stuff we sell, I know, is good quality, and I know it's... Uh, I believe it's cheaper than Costco and uh, Walmart. But I'm also going to send you a link to pipingrock.com, which is this company I've used for about four years now. And the reason I'm going to send you that link is I don't do products. I only do fish oil because I believe in it. I use it myself. That's basically because I use it myself. So I buy it from these guys and I make it available to you guys. Um but there's other things that people need. I don't supply that, but you can buy it from Piping Rock at a really good price. It's really good uh, quality. I have things like vitamin C and that's it, vitamin D and then fish oil. Uh, but any other stuff like magnesium, actually I shall have some magnesium, but a lot of other stuff you can get from here. So I'm gonna send you my uh, wholesale link and you can buy it at wholesale prices. Yeah, and they ship really easy and it's good quality stuff. So is that good or good? Come on, guys, is that good or good? That's my wholesale link. I don't just give, well, actually, I do give it away, but only to my people. Okay, so uh, loving thought. The biggest thing that you can do, and if you look at any spiritual practice, there's always an element of this, and that is being grateful, okay? Uh, you know, I don't, you know, personally, the more grateful I could be throughout the day, the better. There's different ways you can do it. You can have a book, and you write down the things you're grateful for, the things you're grateful for in the past, the things you're grateful for in the future. You can pray. Uh, that's personally what I do. In fact, I do a mixture of all of these. And then I just try and be as grateful as I can with people throughout the day uh, because I've been given so much. And the crazy thing is I've noticed the more I am grateful for things, the more things show up in my life. And it's crazy. I don't know. Has anyone else noticed that? Or is it just me? There you go. It's not just me. It's me, me and the girls. Not the boys, but that's okay. You're young men. <laughs> when you get a bit, of, when you get a bit older, it starts happening. So I would, as far as healthy thought life, the more growth. And here's the thing: when I came back from Iraq, I was grateful for nothing. I wasn't even grateful for my life. That's how bad it got. Okay, so I got to a state where I heard about this, and they said, "Just be grateful for your legs." So you start one thing at a time. So if you've got people in your life that are having trouble, A, give them my book, B, introduce them to me, C, tell them just to be grateful for their lives or for their legs, you know, because at least those legs will get me out of bed. And then once I'm out of bed, I can do some stuff. But anyway, so I won't labor that point, but it is super huge. Loving rest. I don't know if you guys realize, but look at the screen that I'm forcing you to watch. What it does, it dissipates melatonin so any computer screens or like iphones or ipads they have what's called um blue light and the blood blue light dissipates melatonin melatonin is the chemical that is the trigger it doesn't cause you to sleep but it's the trigger that fires the sleep mechanism okay so if you've got a lot of blue light in your life you should stop uh, computers and iphones and stuff usually two hours before but these super attractive glasses that I've got here, I normally have them on, but my children have stolen them because they think that they're, my kids think they're super trendy. They're blue light glasses. They cost about 14 bucks on Amazon. My wife thinks that they're my serial killer glasses. But my kids think they're really trendy. But anyway, the point is they block blue light. And That's what these are. Sorry? That's what these are. That's what you got there, Monica. Yeah. Sweet. That's where my glasses have gone. And yeah, look at Kathy as well. Okay, exercise. Now, I don't know if you realize it, but vigorous exercise and movement of your spine actually charges up your brain. So the, the spine is a generator. It generates electricity, and the brain is the battery. So as you actually move, you actually generate an electricity to light up your brain, which is another reason, apart from the oxygen, that you feel so energized after exercise the right sort of exercise for you of course okay 
So these four uh, pillars, they all stand on a foundation. That foundation is loving power, which is the nerve system. So in other words, if the nerve system isn't working properly, then nothing works properly. The loving food challenge we did, but this is going to be part of the next challenge. This is the tracker sheet we give. So for example, the next chat, the next workshop, sorry, let me rewind. Each pillar has a workshop. At the end of the workshop, you get a bunch of resources like I'm giving you today. But additionally, you get a challenge, which you may or may not take up, depending on you want to take up the challenge. If you take up the challenge, you get a free T-shirt. If you complete all four challenges, you get my body is a temple sweatshirt. Okay, so we got it all going on. We got it all going on. You get a T-shirt. You get a T-shirt. Okay, and then this is the next workshop we've got, the New Year, New You workshop, Thursday at 7 p.m. Who's up for it? Come on, who's up for it? No? I'll be in Cuba. Oh, you're in Cuba. Yeah, stop. <laughs> stop. Yeah. Get off of here with your Cuba talk. What about you, Monica? You up for it? Caesar, you up for it? Uh, I have to check my schedule. All right, okay. What about you? Come on. What about uh, the, the V? I'll have to review the recording. Uh, yeah, recorded. Okay. Right. Okay. There is no recording. I don't do recordings. You're either there or you're not. Life is alive. Okay. But this is what we do have. We have a private Facebook group, completely private. So when you start doing challenge, just post on our private group. So I know you're in. We've got a public uh, page as well on Facebook. The other thing I do on the private stuff on the, is, uh, I, I do a question and answer occasionally, a uh, question and answer session, and uh, I do behind the scenes. I actually do, do that pretty regularly. So sign up to the Facebook page. I go live quite often just to show you what's happening when nobody's looking, what we do behind the scenes. So it's like when I'm reading x-rays and stuff. Now, this is actually one of the biggest resources, and it's uh, never good. It's never going to leave you guys if you got this. But this is my YouTube channels. So the first one, Dr. Craig Heinsohn's on upper and lower spine issues and exercises and stuff. So I'm doing about two videos a month at the moment. And the other one is actually a new one. And it's wellness tips, it's recipes and exercises. I don't want to put my general wellness exercise and recipe stuff all on the upper and lower spine uh, channel because it's not the same kind of content. So I'm going to send you the links to them. Go to the YouTube channels, click subscribe, Ding the uh, notification bell to all, and uh, when I drop the new video, you get them notified straight away. Okay, and it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good stuff. And the other cool thing is when you like them or share them or subscribe, the algorithm actually shows it to more people in this area. So you can actually help people in the community just by doing those sorts of things. Okay, the main cause of subluxation is stress, physical, chemical, emotional. Yeah. You guys remember that? So when do we get our first stress in life, you think? Coming out of the womb. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So when we're born, yeah. And, uh, and actually, you were right when you mentioned earlier in vitro, but uh, coming out of the womb. And this is what happened with these two uh, young men. This is what happened with Reese, the guy that was deaf when he was four. He had a real tough birth. And this guy here... He turned up to Dr. Marie Claude at the age of 32, uh, had a history of community problems, um, back pain, and uh, and all sorts of issues, actually, <laughs> because of me. So I was born with a cord wrapped around my neck, yeah? And, of course, my parents knew nothing about chiropractic care. And I don't know if, it was like, your parents probably didn't know anything about chiropractic care. But, you know, I wasn't bleeding and nothing was broken, so they thought that was okay. But when I look back at my photographs as a Cub Scout, I was all out of balance. As a, like when I first joined the military, I could never stand up straight. I was always getting towed off by the sergeant majors for being uh, well out of balance. Um, they knew it, but no one else mentioned it to me. And when I got, this is my, this is my x-ray, when I got x-rayed at the age of 32, you see that scoliosis, that bend? That's meant to be straight. The spine's meant to be straight there. And that, I am certain that that came from when I was born. Uh, I have no, I personally have no doubt. Scientifically, it can't be proven, but uh, I don't have any doubt. 
So uh, that's called idiopathic, by the way. The medical person will say, well, that's idiopathic, and that means uh, we don't know what causes it. So that fancy word just means we don't know, uh, idiopathic. Idiopathic scoliosis. Uh, but I know, I, I'm certain. <laughs> which is why I'm so red hot on families, which is why when you guys came, we gave you the family health pass. We didn't get anyone in your family checked. You know, they don't need to be under care, but if we get them checked, that's good for a year. That's good for you. And so if you didn't get them checked and you're thinking, well, I need to get them checked now, we give you an extra, um, a, a week from today. If you want to bring them in, or well, they don't have to come in within a week, just let Marissa know or ring in or email us with their details. We'll get hold of them. We'll get them booked in. And instead of uh, like the full evaluation, instead of being 180, I, I pay for it. That's why I, I went through 12 years of excruciating ear pain because my parents didn't know what was going on. I had uh, those you know, station tube surgeries. Uh, we call them grommets in England. But anyway, I had it all. And uh, it was only seven years after chiropractic care when I was flying in an airplane that I noticed I wasn't in excruciating ear pain. You know, so I know this stuff works, even if it takes. I actually, I had lots of benefits before that, many, many benefits before that, but it was just another one. Okay, so kids should get adjusted. Yeah, everyone got that? The gifts of the family have talked about that. Dr. You. Yeah. Okay, so that I think was it. So the gifts I'm going to send you, I'm going to send you the resources. I'm going to send you uh, my link to, um, to, the, to the health food place. I'm going to send you the videos. I'm going to send you the links to the YouTube channels and the Facebook channels. That's going to give you tons and tons of resources to get going. Okay. And I will stay here till the end if you have any questions. And about every week or every two weeks, I do a question and answer on the Facebook group. So if you want to grill me or if anyone in the family wants to grill me, come along. Okay. And finally, I want you all to give yourselves a massive round of applause. <laughs> And you, Caesar, you deserve it too. Yeah. Okay, thank you, everyone. I'm here to the end if you uh, have any questions. Bye, guys. Bye. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Craig. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Sorry for keeping Thank you, Dr. Craig. Dr. Craig. <laughs> See you later, Caesar. <laughs> eh? See you later, buddy. You okay, see you later. No, I just don't know how to get off. Take care, man. You're busy in your house at the moment, is it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, good, man. Yeah, sorry to... Uh... Good. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was worth it. See you later. Thank you. Bye. Bye.